Good morning. This is Rich Ness, Executive Vice President with Open Systems Media, and I'm here for this week's installment of Five Minutes With. This week, my special guest is Grant Erickson, who is the president of the Thread Group and also the also a principal software engineer at Nest Labs. Good morning, Grant. Good morning, Rich. Thanks for having me this morning. My pleasure. Okay, first question for you. This is somewhat confusing to me. Is it Thread Group or the Thread Group? Uh, either is fine. If you want to be formal, the Thread Group, but we're very happy with Thread Group as well. Okay, that's fine, because I've, I've seen it both ways, and I want to make sure that I'm, I'm always addressing everyone the right way. Appreciate that. Okay, um, so I've seen a lot of stuff from the Thread Group in their messaging and what they're trying to tell people, and it seems to me that you guys think you have come up with a key part of the connected home, um, an essential part, actually. Um, is that true? If so... Uh, what is that piece that you guys have come up with, and why is it so important? Absolutely. Great question, Rich. I really appreciate the, uh, the insightful poke there. So we think that Thread is more than just a connectivity technology, that it's an open, flexible IoT wireless network technology uh, that's secure, scalable, reliable, and perhaps most importantly, it's Internet protocol or IP friendly and available now. Uh, and we think one of the things that's kind of a key differentiator is that as an IP network, Thread works with and can support many different concurrent IP-based application layers. And is actually, uh, to kind of put an end to the link wars of the past, is complementary to many existing network link types like Ethernet, Wi-Fi, cellular, DOCSIS, DSL, and even Bluetooth. But and so with Thread, go ahead. <laughs> There's other of these that are available. What makes the, the offering from the Thread Group different from what we've seen from other folks? It's a great question. Uh, really, one of the key benefits and advantages is the ability to not only be wireless, but to be low power. And so we can really uh, reliably support uh, some of the key essential infrastructure applications, um, such as access control, climate control, energy management, environmental monitoring, lighting, safety, and security. And in many cases, the nuts and bolts here just a little bit. Um, it's a software protocol, so how are you reducing power? So part of our power reduction comes first and foremost just from being built on top of the already existing and well uh, understood and vetted uh, 802.15.4 low power wireless radio. Okay. And then in terms of how we use that radio, we try to be as efficient as possible in using that radio uh, to support a, a highly capable IP network on top of it. Okay. Um, slightly confused about that. Um, how are you making the radios more efficient? Wouldn't that be something that the radio vendor would be doing? Certainly they have that efficiency at the hardware level, but in terms of how we do that, in terms of efficiently transporting and signaling uh, IP traffic, um, most importantly, um, Thread is kind of a mesh network, so we've got routers but sitting off of those routers at the periphery of the network are sleepy devices that are likely battery powered. And so making sure that uh, they only need to talk to those routers absolutely when necessary. And when they do talk to them, they have that communication as efficiently as possible. So that's kind of part of the, the special sauce that we're adding on top of that radio to make that, again, IP traffic communication very, very efficient. Okay, now it's starting to click in my head. Now it makes sense. Okay, I get that. Um, so let's go out into the future a little bit. Um, what do you see happening, not just from the Thread Group, but from the uh, home automation industry in general over the next year or so? Yeah, so I think if we look at the application layer, there's still a lot of uh, innovation happening and a lot of excitement, a lot of energy from a lot of different players in the market. But where everyone is skating to is this notion of IP convergence. Uh, if you look at our relationship with uh, Zigbee and their announcement of dot dot um, back at CES, uh, that's an introduction of dot dot into IP networks, thread most importantly, and certainly as a kind of first reference example for them. Uh, if you look around the industry and look at uh, what other companies are doing with their ecosystems, whether it's Nest and Weave, again, we have an IP-based uh, ecosystem. If you look at Apple and HomeKit, it's an IP-based ecosystem. Uh, everyone is, again, skating towards this center point on, on the rink that's all based on IP, 
And with that, we actually have the ability to now really run multiple application layers uh, within an environment um, and, and get convergence at the network layer, even if we're not getting at the application layer. I think another exciting thing that you're really seeing is bringing some of these different application layers together, not from a, they become one and the same from a convergence perspective, but getting tied together by machine intelligence and assistance like uh, the Google Assistant or uh, Amazon uh, Alexa, or we think probably very soon, Siri. But if I'm running one of these other networks, is there an upgrade path like, say, Z-Wave, for example, or do I have to throw away my investment? Uh, Z-Wave is a little bit of a trickier one since they're kind of using uh, proprietary hardware all the way up to the top of the stack software and applications, and so there's probably going to be bridge solutions for those. But if you look at the world of Zigbee, for example, uh, the, the world of dot stop really now makes a very clear evolutionary path in which, assuming they've been resourced appropriately, those devices are actually potentially just a software upgrade away from thread and dot dot in the world of IP uh, connectivity. Sounds great. Uh, I'm afraid we have used up our five minutes. Uh, if somebody wants to get more information about the Thread Group and its initiatives, where would they find that information? Uh, the best single place to start is uh, threadgroup.org, our uh, website. And from there, there's really a phenomenal wealth of materials uh, and resources to help get started with Thread. Awesome. Thank you very much for your time. That was Grant Erickson. He is president of the Thread Group. And I'm Rich Nass with Open Systems Media. Have a great day. Thank you, Rich.